I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru, and this is the ASUS GX800 water cooled laptop running the Deus Ex benchmark at 4K. Uh, this is the sound of it running that benchmark. And that is what I'm going to have to put up with throughout this review because it's a rackety water cooled laptop with a cooling dock at the back. And you may be thinking this looks familiar, kind of. This looks much like that GX700 that Kit Guru actually previewed and then reviewed uh, earlier in 2016. Well, you're not far wrong. Uh, GX700 and GX800 have a, a huge amount superficially in common. GX700 was a conventional ASUS laptop that they had then added a kind of a manifold to the rear which plugged into a water-cooled dock. Uh, the laptop was a GTX 980 desktop graphics with Core i7 CPU and SSDs in RAID and loads of memory and all the rest of it on a 17.3 inch display um, and it was uh, frankly really impressive. Cost about three and a half thousand pounds. We liked it hugely. Kit Guru readers it is fair to say were divided on the subject. Some said goodness gracious me that's nothing like a laptop not the way I understand it which is kind of fair enough um, because this is and the 700 are not exactly portable laptops. The laptop itself is big um, and heavy and the battery life is questionable add on the dock and it becomes something of a monster um, and as you can see it also plays games like a monster this uh, GX800 it's it's more of the same getting the dock out of the way makes GX800 infinitely more manageable and also much much quieter uh, when it's idling like this I hasten to have when it goes under load it gets quite rorty as we will see so the fundamental differences between GX700 GX800 the 700 had 17.3 inch 4k panel this has an 18.4 inch 4k panel uh, the 700 had a single GTX 980 desktop chip this has a pair of uh, GTX 1080s in SLI and as we know mobile desktop same thing so 1080b 1080 that means it has GDDR5X and it's obviously next generation Pascal technology also the Core i7 actually the um, Core i7 6820HK that in this model is slightly faster but it's the same chip it's 4.2 gigahertz rather than 4 gigahertz and power power is hugely significant that there is a 330 watt power brick and this has two of them uh, and under load it draws I forget uh, many 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 watts um, about 500 I think when it's absolutely being thraped on the water cooling dock it's uh, the figures um, on power draw seem to split equally between the dock uh, between the two power bricks the dock and the laptop itself whether that's some clever management by Azus or just a coincidence I'm not entirely clear nonetheless two 330 watt power bricks and uh, it draws a goodly part of that and obviously that means you get heat and that means you get cooling and that means you get noise what else the 700 had a pair of Samsung um, SSDs this has three Toshiba NVMe um, SSDs that's uh, an OEM uh, Tosh um, it's it's the OCZ RD400 that we uh, we've seen and reviewed and the Tosh version of that obviously same company uh, seems to have popped up in a few laptops recently um, blazingly fast and then there are some extras which I haven't actually seen because whereas the 700 I've got the full wheelie luggage all the accessories and the and the mouse and the yada yada with this I've got basically this laptop and the power bricks and the dock in a box with a load of bubble wrap and I haven't got the wheeled luggage and I haven't got the mouse and I haven't got the external antenna boost for the Wi-Fi um, I have to say the Wi-Fi works perfectly well and that's also been updated so all in all, this is more than before and therefore better. Kind of. It depends how you look at it. If you look at this as a laptop, it's a catastrophe. The GX700 weighed 3.9 kilos and then the dock was the four point something kilos, basically together eight kilos. The power bricks also hefty, they're over a kilo a pop. Um, this GX800, the laptop alone is 5.7 kilos. So we have to put to one side the idea that this is mobile gaming, it just is not. If on the other hand you regard it as more convenient than a PC you have to lug around here flat, or you're, you're one of these um, urban professional types who is sitting at home and you reach for the thing and then you do some good gaming, well, that's absolutely terrific. And you put the thing away, 
go down that road and we're golden. But if you're thinking of it as a laptop for sitting on the train, oh, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed. Uh, this requires a main socket. On the other hand, the screen is so good, it does not require a display. Um, let me just uh, run another benchmark for you. And we have good old GTA 5 running at 4K with those GTX 1080s pounding away like goodens. As you'd expect, it hauls along very nicely. Settings are the usual kit guru thing, which is on max, with the exception of anti-aliasing, because uh, that's just a, a graphics killer. Even with a setup like this, it hauls the frame rate down quite noticeably. Nonetheless, this laptop can basically play any settings you throw at it. So, GTA 5 4K, very nice it is too, just as you'd expect. Now, what's not necessarily quite so obvious is that uh, this is in a different mode now to when I was running it on the dock. So, standard mode is undocked on battery power, air-cooled, and frankly, good luck. Uh, battery life is terrible, and if you're going to sit this in your lap, you're a better man than I, even if it's on your desk on battery power, kind of pointless. Uh, optimized is this, so undocked with the power cable and air cooled. Extreme is docked with both power cables attached, uh, liquid cooled. And then manual is uh, docked, manual overclock using their software. This is who supplies. And you can use it obviously to crank up your settings. To my mind, common sense says extreme is the preferred mode, uh, which is what you first saw when it's on the liquid cooled dock uh, with power galore, drawing five or so hundred watts of juice. And that means you're feeding enough juice to the GTX 1080s, and yet the temperatures are sane. If you start going for manual and squeezing out every last frame per second, cranking up the power and the temperatures, uh, my guess is you're not going to help the longevity of your components. And given the expected expense of this laptop, that would be a shame. How much do you think it's going to be? Um, well, the truth is we don't know at the moment. Uh, the GX700 was £3,500. This, I'm guessing, has to be at least 5000 I wouldn't be surprised if it's £5,500. It may be 6000 for all I know. The hardware um, is just of a level we've never seen before in a laptop. Uh, add in the liquid cooling, which is sort of the, the extra magic source from a Zeus, and who knows? And the thing is that this isn't simply a case of a Zeus taking the GX700, making it a little bit bigger and adding an extra chip and so on and so forth. They really have gone through the thing. So even though it looks very similar to GX700, uh, it's significantly different. I mean, for example, the keyboard is their own uh, Asus mechanical keyboard. Um, they say that the switches, for example, have a very similar action and weight to Cherry MX Blue. I'm just going to bring in the microphone. So you can see how it sounds on air cooling, which actually is much like any beefy air-cooled laptop. The fact it's got two 1080s in there pounding away. It's not immediately apparent. Um, so mechanical keyboard, which actually on this pre-production sample, one of the keys is a bit sticky, but then the thing has quite clearly been beaten up in its travels. There's no toys about that. Um, so they've developed a mechanical keyboard, for example. Now, my guess, my feeling is that what Azus has basically done here is they took the GX700 and then they looked across at the other big beast of the gaming laptop world, uh, MSI's Titan, and thought, yeah, we can do that. And that's, I think, where they're aiming at. They basically said, every single thing you see in a Titan that looks quite tasty, we'll have some of that, um, we'll do our own version if needs be, and then we'll push it to the max, and we'll push it even further, <laughs> and then we'll deliver this, this insane, insane laptop. Um, so pricing is completely unknown. At the moment you can buy the latest uh, MSI Titan G83 is listed at £4,400. I, I think this is going to be five and a half to £6,000. That's my guess, but that, that's purely that. Azus has taken GX700, they've updated it across the piece, they've made it 800 they've used the latest hardware, they've um, looked at a couple of criticisms that were made of the 700. For example, when you plug the thing into the dock, could you please engage overclocking mode automatically rather than making us do it manually? And they've done that. Um, it works like an absolute dream. If you're following the logic of GX700 taking in a slice of MSI Titan to deliver the most epic gaming laptop ever, then it is crystal clear that Asus has delivered that. On the other hand, what they have not delivered here to my mind is a laptop. As a laptop, it's hopeless, utterly, utterly hopeless. What you have here is a compact, 
portable-ish gaming computer that happens to look like a laptop. So you park it away, you drag it out in the evening when you're going to do some gaming, you put it away during the daytime. And that's a lot easier to do with this than it is with a small form factor PC and a decent sized monitor, which realistically is going to be bigger than this screen and all the peripherals, your mousey keyboards and such like. This, you, brack, you grab it out, you maybe plug in a gaming controller, you game, you put it away. If you think of it like that, that's great. Now, ideally, a student would buy this. If you know a student that's going to pay five to six thousand pounds, then, you know, obviously you have to hate them be jealous but that's the kind of market on the other hand that means you then have it parked in a student household and that sounds like a terrible idea so put that to one side young professional who doesn't have a lot of space does have a reasonable amount of money likes their gaming cannot stand the latest consoles here you go this is who we're aiming at i like it i i like it in the sense i'm impressed by it that'd be a better word i'm impressed what azus has done here is absolutely epic the figures as you'll see on kit guru are out of this world the quality of this thing is quite remarkable it's just crying shame it's always been beaten up in its travels but that, that's just one of those things this is a remarkable piece of hardware um, and it's gonna have a remarkable price I have no idea where Asus is going to go with the GX900 if such a thing comes along at some point. I don't know what they're going to change in it to make it next, next gen. Time will tell on that score. As things stand, this is the pinnacle of what we laughingly call gaming laptops, even though as a laptop it's hopeless. As to whether people are actually going to buy the thing or they're just going to look at it as an aspirational thing, that's a different question. Go to Kit Guru, look at the graphs, look at our photos. They'll give you a really good, clear view of what Azus has done with GX800 because it is truly remarkable. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Uh, click to subscribe for more videos. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is the remarkable Azus GX800.